we are back in Florida. Well, it, this is a continuation of our herping trip in Florida. We have had such good luck that we are back out again to see what else we can find in the Everglades area. If you haven't seen part one of the herping trip that we've taken so far, definitely go watch that first. And now welcome to part two. <music> Okay, we found what we think is a rock. Oh, it's not a rock! Oh. It's a turtle! That's sweet. Aw, that's a little common musk turtle. Hi, oh, friend! We have those. Yeah, we have those in our zoo. That's so cool. Okay, you should put your hand down for scale. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's really tiny. Look at that! He's so little. And actually, yeah, he has that stripe across his eye, so you are a common musk turtle. They're called musk turtles because when they are scared, they emit a really foul-smelling musk similar to what garter snakes do and ringneck snakes do, all sorts of snakes do it, and so do musk turtles. Are you okay? Is everything... Are all your feet coming yeah. out and everything? Yeah. Want to check him out? Let's see. Can you... I'm gonna poke your butt. He's just scared. Oh, yeah. you're so little! Because of the habit to musk, they're also called stink pots, by yeah. the way. So, let's see. Smell him. Smell his musk glands. Is he scared of us? No. Aww. What a good little musk uh. turtle. Oh, he's missing a foot. Are you really? Yeah. Oh my gosh, he That's is. That's why he wasn't moving on that foot very well. Whoa. Yeah. Crazy. Just missing his foot in there. Yeah, he only has three legs. Yeah. That's insane. Yeah, that's okay. What, that's what it should look like. Yeah. Wow, I'm glad you saw that. Yeah, foot and no foot. Oh, you poor dude. You've been through some things. Because yeah. I'm sure that was a predator attack. Yeah, most likely. Aww. Well, we will help you cross yes. the road. Yeah. Here you there. go. You're safe now. <laughs> Don't get hit. Actually, I've seen how people drive. I'm just going to go. Oh. Put you over here. That's smart. There you go. Yeah, people aren't the best drivers in Florida, we've learned during this trip. Let us know if that's true or just our experiences, but it does seem like Florida drivers oh. are not the best drivers. They're terrible. <laughs> hey, you're different. What are you? No, no, no. Oh, okay, you're not a water moccasin, you're a water snake too. I can tell because of those black lines on your upper lips. Okay, Ed's here now too, so I'm just gonna... Oh. Hello! <laughs> He's like, you sure about that? Oh, look at you flatten out your head! Oh my gosh, alright, come here. Oh, he's so scary! Wow. He's a scary boy. Yeah, these have great defense mechanisms. So this is the southern water snake. As babies, they have a lot of pattern, and as adults, they turn more of a uniform color, but some of them still have varying amounts of pattern to them. When they are scared, like being picked up by a crazy human, they flatten out their heads, they flatten out their bodies, they may strike at you like he did actually initially. They and, may musk. And usually when you pick them up, they musk all over you. He's not musking on yeah. you right now, which is quite surprising. I bet he will. He just hasn't quite figured out what he wants to do yet <laughs> he's like i don't know what's going on this is weird yeah. why are they filming so so far on this trip we've been seeing a bunch of florida green water snakes which we're going to feature in a different video but since this is a different species altogether we'll just include it in this one for you guys so this is a beautiful water snake and just to point it out since he's out of the grass now i knew this was a water snake and not a water moccasin despite the similar coloring to the body overall because of the vertical lines on his labial scales or lip scales that's a feature that water snakes have that cotton mouths or water moccasins do not the water moccasins have more of a, a band over over their eyes or under their eyes. They don't have any vertical stripes to their lips at yeah. all. Uh, in addition, these have that derpy water snake face. They have those round pupils and they are, their body shape is quite a bit different too. But yeah, this is awesome. So like other species of water snakes, the southern water snake is a live bearing species, giving birth to eight to 80 babies at a time. And they also are a fish eating and frog eating species, like again, most water snakes are. I don't know if this one's a male or a female though. Yeah. So let's, yeah, see. let's see. Let's see. We have a boy. Oh yeah, look at that. Wow, look at that wide tail. That bouncing baby boy. Yeah, do you not want me looking at you like yeah, that? He's like, stop looking at my male parts. Okay, sorry buddy, should we let him go? Sure. All right, he was going this way, so we're yep. gonna let this dude go. He's gorgeous though. Yeah, he is. Look at those beautiful lips and tongue and face and just everything is so pretty. It, just like that dark color and all. Here you go, buddy. Yep. There's been a lot of traffic on this road yeah, tonight. Yeah, stay so. off the road. Yeah, you don't need to get hit. Yeah, make more babies. Ooh, that is different. I don't know what that is. It looks corn snakey. It is a corn snake. Oh, hello. Where are you going? Are you just just? 
traveling along the road. There you go. Now you're going back. Here, you catch this one. Okay. Go, Ed. Go. Go, Herpin. Nice. You're going to bite me. Maybe you're not. Gross. He's thinking about it, but he might <laughs> I'm not. I'm not food. Oh, he decided against it. Yeah. All right. Well, here's another red rat snake, a a.k.a. a corn snake. I smell like you now. Wow, this one's beautiful. Yeah, this it one is. has some really bright reds. It's like it's you... Like you could have been bred in captivity. You're so pretty. Yeah. Are you a male or a female? And how bad did you must tell of me? You don't have to climb. Uh, male. Male. Yeah. Okay. Yep. That's a thick tail. Wow. I think that's the prettiest corn snake we have seen so far. Hi. That's gorgeous. I'm just, just, just another me. You don't need to like go after me. He's really interested in your yeah, hands. Yeah, he is. Doesn't quite know what to think. Is he tail buzzing at all? He was. Oh, was he? Okay. Yeah. He's calmed down a bit. All threat displays. Okay. Well, we've well, already we caught two of you, so. Yep. Go back. Run away. Okay, we just let the corn snake go. And ring neck snake. Oh my gosh, really? Yeah, right here. Right by the car. Wow. Oh my gosh. Well, that's a species we haven't found yet here. Yeah, you're brand new. Oh, wait, I can't even see you. You're so tiny. I can't believe it. Two snakes in one stop. This yeah. is great. So yeah, this is the southern ring neck snake. They get the name because they live in the south and they have a ring around their neck. Yeah. They have a perfect name. They're a very small species of snake, as you can see. Ring neck snakes as a whole, though, live pretty much all over the United States. There's not many places in the U.S. where you can't find a ring neck snake of some sort. But the southern is the one that's native to Florida. They only grow to around 10 to 12-ish inches long. So this one is probably a couple of years old, to be honest. Like, he's already a sub-adult, if you can believe that. Now, unlike live bearing species like the uh, garter snakes and water snakes, these are egg laying species. Now, can you imagine how tiny their eggs are being this big themselves? They only lay two to seven ish eggs at a time, which is understandable with or yeah. given their size. Their diet consists of anything small that they can fit in their mouth. So snail or slugs, they'll eat invertebrates, they'll eat, if they're big enough, small amphibians, maybe even other reptiles if they can. And they have this really unique defense mechanism in that when they are scared, they'll roll over onto their back. Now, whether they are playing dead like a hognose snake does, or if they're just showing off the bright colors on their belly, which are gorgeous, let me tell you. I mean, look at this. Beautiful belly. Wow, he has a meal in him. There's oh, a yeah, bit of a lump there. I wonder what yep. you just ate. But they have very bright colors on their belly. Oh, he's playing dead. Is he? Oh, he had his mouth open. Oh. So maybe it is kind of playing dead. Look at that. Yeah, I mean, there's lots of sources. That, oh, he's totally playing dead. Oh, are you playing dead? He died. Oh, I'm sorry. Was I holding you too long? Oh. You killed him. And now he's deaded. Showing off that bill. Oh, and he's back alive. And he's back alive. Oh, oh, no. Oh, no. He's spitting it up. Oh, no. He's regurgitating his meal. He's really unhappy. Well, what did you eat? I guess if you're doing it. Sorry. Well, suck it down, boy. Yeah, I didn't want you to... Spit don't lose your, your meal. It looks like an egg. Yeah, he ate some sort of egg. Okay, I don't want to stress you out. We're going to let him go. Yep. Because <laughs> we don't want him to lose his meal no. over this. So we're just going to put him back in the grass right away. Did he lose it? Yep. Wow, that's a big egg. What did you eat? Sorry, didn't want you to I have mean, to do that. I mean, you got most of the nutrients from Actually, it. Actually, yeah, it's just the shell. Oh, hmm. there's three shells. Look at that. These are totally three snake egg shells. Oh, so he's eating snake eggs. Whoa! Okay, that's kind of cool for science. Yeah. yeah he definitely absorbed all the nutrients inside of yep. the eggs already, so I don't feel too bad. But still, sorry, bud. Yep. Just going to put those eggshells out there. There you go. Proof. Ring neck snakes eat snake eggs. Yeah. That was kind of cool. All right, onward. Oh my gosh, it's a Decay's brown snake. Oh, really? You are a full grown adult and you are only that big. That thing's massive for a Decay's. Yeah, you're ginormous. Oh my gosh, your face is so stinking adorable. Oh my goodness. Okay, come. can you come here? Can I pick you up? Are you alive? Are you alive? Are you okay? Oh yeah. Yeah, he's fine. He just is very docile. Oh my gosh. Decay's brown snake. Considering we, we've had some bigger snakes with us, like Ooh. that giant water snake tonight, oh this guy's teeny. He's so tiny. This is the angel hair version of yes. the snakes. The that spaghettis. We, the spaghettis we're finding tonight. All right, so uh, Storaria decayi, if I remember correctly, that's their scientific name. Remembering it off the top of my head though, so I could have gotten that a little bit wrong. 
But the decays brown snake is a very small snake. Like we were saying, this is an adult yeah. or close to an adult. This one is a male. We checked out its tail just now. Nice thick tail at the base before it tapers off. Very yep. long tail. What, nine to 13 centimeters or nine to 13 inches, I think? Yeah, 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 they don't get very big. These are unique eaters in the fact that they eat primarily slugs, which is their preferred diet in our experience since we do keep these and we actually have bred them in our zoo before, uh, but they can also eat earthworms and they eat those in the wild. They've also been found eating other small things. I mean, they're tiny. They can only eat yeah. things that come fit in their yeah. mouth. There's not a whole lot that fits in that mouth. Not a whole lot that'll go in there, but they'll eat things like frog eggs and tadpoles. tadpoles. The things they do eat though, they don't constrict. They're not constrictors. They're not big enough to have the strength to constrict their prey. Instead, they just grab their prey with their mouth. They reposition it quickly and swallow it alive. Um, they're metal snakes then. Yeah, they just eat their prey alive. They do. For such a cute little snake, you are pretty metal. Uh, a couple of key characteristics to them, uh, because this could either be a decays or a very small other snake, you know, a baby other snake. But the reason why we knew it was a decays is because, because of the way it is. It's because of the way it is. You can tell that it's an aspen tree because of the way it is. Uh, no, they have a very faint dorsal stripe down their back, and they have two parallel rows of very tiny dark brown spots. Hopefully you can kind of see the yep. two stripes, or two rows of spots leading down the back. And those spots can connect. But usually you can still see, like, distinguished spots as tiny as they are. So cool! Oh my yeah. gosh, they have a very blunt face. Super cute. These I love are, them. These are really easy to find if you flip rocks. They're everywhere. Yeah, we have them up by us. It was odd to find one on the road. Yeah, because usually you find them under like rocks or logs or not on the road in our yeah. experience. But but hey, something. he's probably hungry probably. or he's looking for a female. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I love them. Yeah. Okay. okay, if you guys are watching and this is an adult, try to imagine how tiny they are as babies. They're live bears. They've been born in our zoo before, and they are, no joke, that long. Yeah, like, they're like four inches. No, yeah, it's three to four inches. Like, they yeah. are tiny, tiny little things. They are tough to get thriving, too. Yeah, a lot of the times they, they don't, there's nothing they eat. You can try and feed, like, parts of earthworms. Pieces and hope they take to it, but a lot of the times they don't. So yeah. this is also a species you don't really want to keep. As cute as they are, they are pretty strict eaters, so you kind of get lucky if you're able to establish them in captivity. Gotta get slugs and breed slugs first. Yeah. You ready to set him on back? Yeah. Get him off the road so he doesn't get hit? Right in the middle of the road. Just yeah. pause. So, dude, I'm gonna move you out here. Go hide. Don't, don't get hit by cars. Yeah. All right, what do you got? We're on day two. We're back out again. Yep, it's halfway light out right now. Yep, so herping season or herping time is just about to hit that sweet spot for snakes crossing the road. And we have been finding a ton of lubber grasshoppers yep. that don't like to sit in your hands. Now, there's also one over here that I can grab and throw at you. Thanks. Come here. here have, oh, yeah, how did that work? Whatever, it's on the ground in front. There, perfect. Perfect. All right. It's so like he wants to be a model. <laughs> So lubber grasshoppers are, as you can see, a large species of grasshopper. They grow to around three inches long. And what's really cool is, is when they're babies, like all the way until their final molt as an adult, they are jet black with a yellow to orangish stripe down their back. So they're really cool. They're called Diablo grasshoppers in some places too, actually. Is he still on me? Yeah. Okay, cool. We're just chilling. Yeah. Uh, they're herbivores like other grasshoppers are, but they have a couple cool methods of defense from their bright colors, which is an example of a posematic coloration, which is basically a warning symbol to others that means I taste bad. You don't want to eat me. And they do, apparently, I haven't tried it myself, taste bad. I mean, I've seen alligators snap at them and then just go... Blah, blah, they blah. spit them out, spit yeah. Them back out, yeah. So they must not taste good at all, huh? In addition to their bright warning colors, they also have the ability to make a pretty loud hissing sound to scare off predators. They're really cool grasshoppers, though. Some people keep them as pets. You can breed them in captivity. We have in the past, but they are seen everywhere down here in Florida. Yes, this is actually where they're native to as well. They actually are. They're not an invasive species. They're Even just a big pest. They are considered agricultural pests. Uh, what are you working at here, Emily? We found a huge Burmese python! Oh my god! Holy cow! Oh, what? I can't believe we found this! Holy moly! Wow! That's so much bigger than I thought it was from the road! This is insane! 
He's this, musking all over you too. I smell terrible. Wow. So, oh Boom. my god. Nope, don't need that to happen. Nope, don't need to get bit by a berm. What do we do? Uh, well, I'm gonna film it for a little bit. Okay. Because he is gorgeous. He's so, upset, but he is gorgeous. So this is a Burmese python. They are invasive here. So berms make great pets, as long as you have space, of course. Oh, wow. <laughs> How long would you say he is? Probably 10 feet? I'd say probably 8. You think only 8? Yeah. Doug is 7 and a half. Maybe split the difference, say he's 9. Yeah. Are you tired? <laughs> I know I'm tired. And our car is in the background just running in the middle of the road. Because yeah. we just saw him in the coming out of the bushes. Yeah, so we just ran for it and didn't have a chance to turn on the camera until I was already wrangling him. Yeah. We thought we lost him for a second. We honestly did, yeah. <laughs> It. So yeah, what facts do you have about berms, Emily? The Burmese python was introduced not terribly long ago. Back in the 70s, I believe, there was the first sighting, or around this 1970s was the first sighting of the berm in the Everglades. And it's suspected that those initial Burmese pythons in Florida were pets that were released into the wild, which is never a good idea. But then in 1992, Hurricane Andrew came through and destroyed a reptile breeding facility just north of the Everglades and released about 200 Burmese pythons into the wild, which then became a pretty successful breeding population. Now there's an estimated anywhere from 10,000 to 100,000 Burmese pythons in Florida. Now the problem with them is they're so secretive, you can't hunt these very easily or you can't find them very successfully. Um, python hunters have tried training beagles to smell out Burmese pythons in the wild. And what would happen is they would leave and release their five beagles to find them but they'd only end up with one at the end of the night because a beagle is a good prey size for a prey item for a large Burmese python. So another thing they've tried doing is radio tracking a male and then using the coordinates or the signal from the GPS in the male's tracking device to lead scientists to females. So that has proved somewhat successful. But what I found interesting is pretty recently, they're trying something new. What scientists have started doing is capturing a possum or a raccoon or another mid-sized meal, a good size prey item for a variety of sizes of berms, and putting a radio collar on it and letting it go. And then when they notice the radio transmitter isn't moving at the right rate for an opossum or a raccoon, they track down the collar and that usually leads them to a good sized berm in the wild that has eaten it. That's been a way that they've actually found quite a few females to be able to reduce them from Florida. Unfortunately, it's not her fault that she's an invasive species here. It was from human error that caused it to happen. But what's happening now with all these Burmese pythons is they're eating everything they can fit in their mouths. They're eating the rabbits, the raccoons, the possums, alligators, even bobcats are almost extirpated from this area, meaning they are not existent anymore, almost completely and thanks to the Burmese python. So they're causing a lot of issues because they don't belong here. Unfortunately, in Southeast Asia, they are an endangered species because they are overhunted for their meat and for their skin, but you can't take these and let them go in Asia because they have built up so many immunities to diseases here that they would then release to the wild populations in Asia, so. Yep. What an epic conclusion to today's part two herping video in Florida. This is insane. Now, since we did technically picture up and capture her, I don't know if it counts as capturing, but regardless to play safe, we do have a number that was given to us after our last herping adventure that told us, if you happen to find a Burmese python, call this number so the proper authorities can come and dispose of it. It sucks that it has to happen, but they are such a nuisance to the uh, wildlife in Florida that it's it's a necessary evil. So we're going to take care of that off camera, of course, but I want to thank you all for watching today's video. I can't believe we found a Burmese yeah, python. That's... The last one we saw was roadkill. Remember? Yep. Yep. Yeah. This is a live Burmese python. A live python. berm. I can't believe it. Who does it. not appreciate you. No, she doesn't care about you right now. No. I, could, I can get like right up on her. And then if... And then if Emily moves, if I move. although that made me jump a lot. <laughs> here, look over here, follow Cause I, me. Because I'm watching this with the camera, so I'm not really paying attention too much. Here, now she's looking at the camera. Yeah, Perfect. slightly. So thank you guys for watching. Thank you, Patreon backers, for your amazing support and making this trip possible. 
you allowed us to find a Burmese python in the wild. Super cool. Let us know which snake or which animal from today's video was your favorite in the comments below. I think mine is pretty obvious. Yeah, this one. I think this one's mine too. It's tough to beat that. No, yeah. Because you like always hear stories about the Burmese pythons in Florida. And here is one right in front of yes. us. We found it all on our own. Yes. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next time. Look at you. You're such a beauty and upset.